Hello, people of YouTube. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 25 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on the internet. It's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Knits. I hope you're well. Welcome if you are a new viewer and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really, really happy to um, be filming this new episode. Although I am also very, very hot because today has been stifling as um, as has been every day <laughs> almost in the last two or three weeks now honestly i'm craving for some rain but that's not the topic um i have been very productive in these uh, last few weeks and i will show that to you there is sewing there is knitting so let's uh, not babble on much longer Grab a drink, grab a whip or anything else and uh, let's go! I don't know about you, but today I am drinking water kefir. It's, um, it's a funny fermented drink which is slightly fuzzy. I'm making experiments at the moment because it's... Um, it's fairly new for me. I've started making it like two weeks ago and I'm still, yeah, experimenting with um, sugar and fruits and everything. But this one is really nice. I hope what you're drinking is really nice and refreshing as well. Let us start with the sewing. I made a dress. It's the Manat dress. Um, the pattern comes from Chez Machine. French brand. I don't know if she also sells them or produces them in English, but it's a sleeveless midi dress. Well, at least it goes to my knees. I made it with uh, linen, which I got from an online shop called tissue.net. It's actually the first time that I have uh, such a how can I say that without it sounding wrong? It's a very busy pattern for me. For me, I know it's not really very colorful, but it's it is there. <laughs> it is there, and I'm not used to that. But I wore it already, and I loved it. So I guess maybe this one will will work. Um. I made it in one day. Well, I cut the pieces on Saturday and I saw everything on, on Sunday. Nothing special to report, honestly. It was not very complicated. The, the explanations of the pattern are really clear. There was just one place where I ran into trouble and it, it was a trouble on my, of my own making, is that when it came time to attach the, the top and the, um, and the skirt, I got all confused because I was not um, I was not envisioning things as they seem to be described in the pattern on the illustration that's in the pattern. Um, so I sent a cry for help on Instagram and the, the designer actually replied really quick and she explained things and I, act, I, I actually was envisioning things right it's just that for some reason I couldn't make them couldn't make my vision and reality fit um, the pattern was right I was right anyway once I once I wrapped my hand my head around that it worked much better um, the ruffling at the waist was a bit eh, but that's just because I'm not used to doing that because as as long as you actually pin things right you know there's a there's a v-shape in the front and in the back and yeah as long as you actually pay attention to what you're doing it's the the difficulty is um in actually having ruffles which are basically even all along you know i think i made it and if not i'm the only one to see it so shit happens um yeah, I've been wearing it, no, I've worn it once so far, but I know that I will be wearing it a lot this summer, particularly if the heat waves stays on. So, 
Yeah, and also in September when I have my cast, uh, I won't be able to actually put on real pants. So I will have to <laughs> rely on dresses and this one. Um, I think I think it will see quite somewhere in the in the coming weeks and months. So that was my first make of this last two, three weeks. The second one is another sewing project, is a second pair of botanic pants. Yeah, I didn't attach the belt in the front. I made these with linen as well because I think this is the perfect fabric for, for the summer and I love it. This one is washed linen, so it's it's a bit more, um, how can I, so it looks a bit lived in already, let's say. I don't have much more to say than I did um, last winter when I made the one out of uh, wool. It's just, it's way easier than it actually seems. The pattern is in French, Spanish and English, I think, so you could also make it if you wanted. I think it's also available. It's I got it as a paper pattern, but I think it's also available as PDF. So same for the for the dress actually, but I don't know about the English version of it. Um, anyway, it's my new favorite pants. I've been wearing them basically non-stop. If I could, I would only wear them actually, along with the dress. Uh, they're just very comfortable and um, and yeah, they're perfect. They're giving my legs some air um, while being, let's say I can wear them relaxed or a bit dressed up with fancy sandals and um, I can wear them with a loose top or with a tight top. Um, they're just very, very versatile and I love them. I love these pants. One thing I recognize with the dress and with the pants is that I would really, really like an interlocker. I think that's how it's called, that machine, so that my finishing would be cleaner. Yeah, because everything is clean and I really managed to make something without having to uh, t rip off the seams or anything. But yeah, then it's slightly disappointing to me, at least, that the edges are a bit rough on the inside and everything. Yeah, maybe someday, maybe for my break, my, my, maybe for my birthday. I was about to say maybe for my breakfast, but that would be, that would be wrong, right? Uh, maybe for my birthday, or for Christmas, or for any other occasion, non-occasion. Anyway, it's not in the plans for now. So that was the two sewing projects which I finished in the last weeks. I have two finished knitting objects as well. The first one is the Norte cardigan with a pattern from Imke von Matusius and it's out of the Breeze magazine. I showed it to you last time and I think I was actually doing the ribbing around the neckline. Well I finished it completely and I even saw the buttons if I can find them. It's only five of them on the lower edge of the of the neckline. I actually recognized afterwards that this one was off. It's normally every three rib and for some reason I skipped one there. So I will just have to um, undo the first, the top three and, and sew them again. But it's not, it's not like it's a lot of work. So I just, I just felt a little stupid. But anyway. It's no big deal either and I managed to close them without it being visible so that they were off so I guess it doesn't matter that much and it's just for my sanity um, what can I tell you the pattern was really nice to follow I used size four millimeter needles and size three and a half for the ribbing um, Instead of size two and a half, I think, which was required by the pattern, well, which was recommended in the pattern to get the gauge, but my gauge was completely off in two and a half, so four it was. And uh, Imke actually told me that she is a very loose knitter. I think I told you that last time already. So since I'm a pretty tight knitter, it made sense that I needed to go up one or two or more needle sizes. The yarn is 100% Merino Superwash uh, from Squirrels Yarns. She's a French indie dyer. 
I love the fact that it's so nuanced, you know, it has very subtle changes in color. And even if I did not alternate the skeins, it's not. You have darker spots, but it's not. It's nothing shocking either. And I don't really mind. It's a bit warm. I've worn it a couple of times in the morning this week because it was cold. Or fresh, let's say. Not really cold. But for now it's a bit too heavy for the rest of the day. Yeah. Mm. I finished it in 19 days, actually, I wanted to mention this. So being a monogamous knitter actually helps uh, being more productive, it turns out. So yeah, 19 days for a cardigan. And it made me realize that I really, really want to make more of them. I really want to make more garments and not just accessories. Yeah. And this is when I actually introduced my second finished object, which is a hat. Yeah, well, it was good to um, get something to distract myself after this big project. It's the Elska hat by Isolda Teague, and I bought the kit for it in Edinburgh in March this year. I look like a light bulb. Anyway, it's a fair isle hat, um, slightly slouchy. I need to, um, I need to finish. Um, Weaving in the ends and then block it. I think I will probably be able to do that tonight. I chickened out out of... Um, I chickened out of... It's not something I use on a regular basis, this expression. Anyway, I did not dare um, carrying the yarn all along the, um, the inside. Because it has six colors and I thought it would just be cumbersome. But it would probably just have been easier than having to weave in so many ends all along. It's like I had a full fringe of hair inside, you know. Um, yeah, I'm almost done. And at least with Fair Isle or with uh, color work, you don't have to worry too much about how you actually put them in. So yeah, it's not the cleanest finishing I have ever done, but I don't really mind. No one will see it. It's way too warm for now, but it's just perfect. I love it. The pattern is just so beautiful and so intricate. The yarn is um, Shetland Heritage by Jameson and Smith. It's the Heritage Natural and Heritage the shade is called indigo I think six colors and I bought the kit because a friend who was actually uh, at the festival as well at EYF I asked her so did you get everything you wanted and she said yeah well I just regret not getting the kit for the Elska hat by Zolda on her booth I said yeah don't worry I can I can get it for you and I went and I found the hat was so nice that I actually wanted to make one for myself. So I got the kit. I got it for her with um, red contrast color and the blue for myself. Yeah, so I'm thanking her for sending or sending me there. Yeah. I offered to go there, but yeah, I'm really happy actually. It was, it was a challenge. The six colors, it was a bit daunting, but the pattern is really well written. The chart is very clear. She actually made, so she, you have the chart and then on the side you have um, two columns with um, the colors which are you're supposed to use. So there's one column for the main color and a second one for the contrasting color so that you always see uh, which one you're supposed to use on this row. I think it makes it very easy to follow what you're doing. And on the others, well, and next to these two columns, you have two more which are blank so that if you want to use colors which are not the kits, because you can also get the pattern on its own, you can just color them in with the colors you're using so that you don't get confused. You know, I find it really, really smart. I didn't use that, but I um, penciled them in so that I would see which row I, I had done already. Because it happened already that I, I penciled on, I penciled in the full row, and uh, I ended up having to rip it off because I had made a mistake, and the um, rubber actually removed the print, well, the ink from the print. So it was um, harder to read in the end, which sucks. So using these on the side was very, very convenient. So it was not overly difficult. 
it was just daunting because of the number of covers. But I'm happy I made it. And I will be even happier once I'm done weaving the ends in. That's it for my finished objects. I have one whip to show you. It's a very, very small whip. I'm actually, oh God, the ball keeps trying to ex escape. I'm halfway through the second row. It's the Solano um, top by Stella Egidi. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, I'm sorry. It's also from the Breeze magazine. So it's a top, you have two options. You have the option with sleeves and the one without. And I have decided to make it without sleeves um, with linen. It's uh, Antigone, the yarn by Dererum Natura. And uh, it's my first time knitting with linen, but so far so good. I find it not irritating at all. I wouldn't say it's soft. It's probably, well, I recognized with the, with the swatch that it gets much softer once you wash it and block it but what's very surprising is that it has no elasticity you know it has no give so it feels different from uh, from wool which i'm used to or even from silk actually but i think it's going to be very nice as a sleeveless top for summer i was inspired by a friend of mine who made a tank top with that same yarn actually i bought her leftovers it was a brilliant idea i wanted to try linen and i had my eyes on the solano already but i even had i even had wool planned for it to make it with the sleeves as a regular sweater but i thought why not make it a sleeveless top so i'm trying this it's very slippery though the yarn ball actually doesn't hold together very well so i think you will have to make like that kind of balls you know which get which I hold tighter together. The swatch I made was just right with the needle size recommended in the pattern. 3.25. Uh, you need two needle sizes for it. It's size 3 and size 3.25. So that's the beginning of it. I'm looking forward to being able to wear it. So I will be monogamous on this as well. Tomorrow I'm taking the train and I will have, I think, three hours. So two, three hours tomorrow and three hours on Sunday. So I think I will have a lot of time to knit if I don't spend the whole trip sleeping, obviously. I will do my best. So probably on, well, by, by Sunday night, I will have done much more. You can follow my progress on Instagram. That's where I put most updates. That's my only whip. I am considering after I'm done with this one, actually, going back to one of the sleeping whips which i have i have quite a few and it sucks so i want to finish them so that i can you know restart with a clean slate uh probably i will start with having 10 more whips at the same time again but at least it will be 10 different whips <laughs> some some of the ones i have i have started like a year ago it's not so good i should finish them and then yeah, just start afresh. I have two new new ends, let's say. Um, two new purchases. No, it's not two purchases. One is a purchase and the other is a gift. The first one, so the one I purchased, is the kit. I think you can call that a kit. It's basically a bag and, um, and a skein of yarn. So the bag is, I bought them from Hanalisa Hafakam. Uh, she's German and she makes the most gorgeous project bags. I already have a small one in which socks are living and a big one in which I hosted um, the, the, the cardigan and the hat because six balls of yarn take space. I have a lot of ends actually because I was I was weaving them in while I was in the subway so I had to stuff the ends somewhere. And I don't want to get all confused by leaving them on the side and not cutting them. So I cut them and just stuffed them in the, in the bag. Anyway, so this one is a medium size. It's uh, linen and Harris tweed. I think it's Harris, but it's tweed anyway. And the skein is from Oysters and Pearls. And it's 100% Corydale, grown, spun and botanically hand-dyed in the US. Three-ply sport weight, 308 yards. 
that's 282 meters, 400 grams. And then you have the indications for the swatch and the washing instructions. It's non super wash. And the pattern that came with these is um, socks, and it was created especially for this. I'm very optimistic with my sock making. I haven't finished one pair yet, and I have more and more sock yarn accumulating. It's bad. I should stop doing that. <laughs> but anyway. So yeah, I really, really like these. And they came really fast by, by the mail, actually. And I wanted to tell you, because at the moment, Hannah Lisa, well, I'm sorry, because the light seems to be getting away. Um, hope it will be fine, but I'm almost done anyway. So Hannah Lisa has created um, a bag with a limited edition fabric that says, that has handwritten, um, nevertheless, she persisted. And so it's a pre-order uh, for medium and uh, large size bags. It, they are based on the same shape than the regular ones, but so it is a limited edition and she's donating 15% of the proceeds of the bags to two organizations. So half of it goes to Trans Lifeline. I'm going to read because I don't know it by heart, obviously. A grassroots hotline and micro grants organization offering direct emotional and financial support to trans people in crisis for the trans community by the trans community. And the other half of the donation will go to He for She, the UN Women Initiative for Gender Equality. I find it really, really nice that, um, well, it's a bit, it, it's a bit like the, the the Tits Out Collective, which I told you about last week, well, not last week, in the previous episode. It's just that I find it amazing when creative people actually put their creativity in the service of, of the community and, and give back. And um, yeah, I'm sorry, my well, I'm not really, really good with words all the time. So um, I'm... I have trouble sometimes articulating what I what I want to say, but I think it's really great, and I'm. It really makes me want to encourage these initiatives. So I will not be buying this bag because I already have too many. But I encourage you um, to go ahead and check on her website if you are looking for one. Maybe um, choose to invest in this one. The second new in which I wanted to show you is a bit of a surprise which I had my friend Gael she went to Iceland and she brought me two balls of lit loppy and I was so happy when I when she told me she brought me something I was like Ee! I had no idea what it was obviously but when I saw them I was like so excited um it's such a nice present so it's it's just um a hundred percent what does it say it says pure new wool and so it's and the sun is coming back um, made in Iceland 50 grams 100 meters 109 yards it's a dark it's it's like a light gray and a dark gray it's almost black actually but it has a lot of white hairs as well and I don't know yet which what I'm going to do with them to make with them um, because I would like it to be a special project, you know. It's Aran weight, I think. But so I will be able to find maybe mitts, mittens, or a hat. I don't know. Probably not all of that. But yeah, it made me so happy, you know. It's just I have never been to Iceland myself. It's part of my dream destinations. Maybe someday it will happen. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe I can find something which will which will um, carry the meaning of that um, special present and special country as well. I'm not sure that I'm making much sense right now, so I should probably stop. But yeah, I was just so, so, um, so touched, so moved that she actually thought of me and, and brought me these from Iceland all the way from there. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. So I'm going to stop for now. I haven't, well, I have nothing more to tell you today, to show you at least. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, subscribe, share, everything, whatever. Um, it's always highly appreciated.
and I will see you very soon. In the meantime, enjoy your knitting, your sewing, your creating and take very good care. Bye.